the Lagrange Legacy Archives, number 035, Studies of Polar Organization. Lagrange Network has cultivated multiple organizations, some of which were born in the currents of thoughts, some of which are naturally bounded by blood ties, some are established to cope with extreme environment of the space, while some were forged for new ideals and courage. These organizations in the space have been sparkling, colliding, and encouraging each other, constantly breathing new energies to drive the evolution of the organizational ecology in return. Studies of polar organization and ideological effects, Sancta Familia Culture Press. In the early exploitation of solar system, administration, enterprises, and social institutions have been three main types of organizations existing in the Lagrange network for thousands of years. As the R&D of warp drive develops, human beings set their foot in the further tier of the solar system. While the information lag caused by long distance has been the major obstacle in organization management. To catch up with the wave of the solar system exploitation, various organizations hurried to develop their branches on different star orbits and allowed flexible policy making. In this case, currents of thoughts were stimulated at the premise of grassroots autonomy and the studies of polar organization started to prevail. Several of small structures began to share the limelight, although they were not as stable as large organizational structures, they were more flexible and streamlined, which enabled them to ride out the storm in Great Navigation Era. Just as an old saying in the Terran sphere, it's easier for the small boat to turn round. As the Gold Rush Era ushered in, the gate construction attracted numerous explorers to warp into unknown systems. However, the time cost for cross-system communication was easily up to hundreds or even thousands of years, in which case the Lagrange network seemed to be the best solution. Since the communication of the Lagrange network depends on rare channels connected to the one and only Lagrange node, it was often the case that explorers needed to queue up for their turns. This was a tougher issue to be solved for the cross-system organizational management. Soon, the pressure of cross-system communication penetrated into every corner of the ecology, so that more flexible management modes for large cross-system organizations were born. Some small branches with high flexibility in decision-making gradually separated themselves from the structure adapting and evolving as new backbones in new explorations, while some new organizations born in new systems also have cultivated unique and localized management modes. Pom Fail, a researcher in polar organization studies during the Gold Rush era, once predicted that, in the future, there must be millions of different organizations in 10,000 star systems. Although plenty of new management modes born in the Gold Rush era have already obsoleted due to low adaptability, there were still some vigorous ones survived the fluctuation and prevailed in the Milky Way. Clans are originated from small and medium family businesses so they are small and streamlined, but tight close. Compared with the vastness of the space, the population invested in the star system exploitation seemed to be negligible. Despite the scarcity in membership, plenty of clans still prospered and rose rapidly thanks to effective management and mutual trust. Trujillo clan is just an example. They maneuvered among different forces, established Sacrum Chu Imperium finally, and left remarkable fortunes and legacy thanks to the close cooperation of members. As for Herodin clan of the same period, not as glorious as Trujillo though, whose motto is, 
to dive deeply and cautiously, for the Lagrange network has been increasingly active and enhanced since Gold Rush era. In the process of expanding, some clans may also accept members outside the family tree, as long as they are considered reliable and competent by other members. Lila Trudesim, the director of the Trudesims, once stressed that there are only two things keeping our hearts beating. One is the blood, the other is the ideal. We consider the latter is the true spine of our clan. As for guilds, another notable type of organization emerged in the warring era of Milky Way, a dark age. To cope with complex warring situations, many less armed forces tended to hire mercenaries to ensure the safety of industrial productions and trades. However, with the escalation of the war, conflicts between the forces were increasingly intense. Higher requirements and expectations were for mercenaries in battles too. So the earliest guild of mercenaries was born. Early guilds assembled multiple mercenary forces, implemented strict military management, centrally commanded operations of all members, and such management were also proved effective with constant victories. Germanicus Corps and Ares Corps, known as two supergalactic factions today, were both evolved from guilds and enhanced those fights. The two organizations have devoted all their efforts in battling since their births. With the restart of Dawn Accord and Ceasefire, reconstructions and new explorations drive explorers to constitute a larger organization, the Union, so as to face up challenges and threats together in their journey. Beneficial from large membership, Unions can pull wisdom and efforts of different individuals for operations and constructions. Li Zaidao, the leader of the Pacificator Union, said that the secret of our success lies in wide cooperation and full use of personal strength. Simple as it may appear, managing a large organization and wisely utilize each one's advantage is never easy. Therefore, the Union is considered as one of the most rewarding, but also demanding type of organization. The organization itself doesn't stay still. It may split from damages, while also rebuilds and evolves during self-healing. Commanded by Ken and Kim, Chief the General Staff of Ares Corps, must be the best interpretation of the structural evolution. The impressive legacy left for organizational revolution has been well preserved in post-Lagrange era, making the studies of polar organization entirely on trend in the Lagrange network. Explorers gradually take an initiative to evaluate which structure suits their needs best among clans, guilds and unions, then practice their theories boldly. As Milky Way revives, the multi-organizations coexist and thrive harmoniously. The wisdom of mankind together with the changing environment contributes to the evolving diverse organizational ecology, which is also an inevitable result influenced by the Lagrange network construction and exploration in new galaxies. It's believed that more types of organizations are expected to emerge in the fluctuating space, which is also the reason why the studies of polar organization is evergreen. In the future, the studies of polar organization are expecting more new blood and energy.